Welcome to Real Estate Investing Abundance, the show for busy, fulfilled professionals like you to learn how to develop financial independence built on solid, passive real estate investments. Now, here is your host, Dr. Alan Lomax. Enlightened investors. As passive investors, you are not involved in the day-to-day management of the properties in your investment portfolio, but as savvy investors, the more knowledge we have about the operations of the facilities we invest in, the better we are at reducing risk to maximize our earnings. And I am excited to explore with our guest how to best leverage off-site professionals. Today, we sit down to visit with the investor who has done it all from ground-up construction to property and asset management. A.J. Shepard is an investor, licensed contractor, and entrepreneur. Through Uptown Properties, he provides over-the-top property management and development services. His passion and his background in real estate and construction management created an avenue for his company to provide all services necessary to bring excellent returns on investments for all of those he works with. AJ, before we go into the behind the scenes functions and how to systematize the processes that bring us the best returns, share an experience from your formative years that helped you to be the person you are today. Alan, thanks so much for having me on the show. Really appreciate it. Yeah. So an experience that uh, shaped my journey, you know, my father was an incredible mentor to my brother and I, and as we were growing up, he really stressed the ability to work with teams and specifically like my brother and I working together. Um, I'll never forget like every single time we walked out the door, he would tell us that he's like, you guys are like double dragon. You guys are back to back fighting the world. And so that like sense of camaraderie along with team building and just, you know, I, you know, the love for family too. I would say that's like really been one of those things that I will always remember. And, you know, my father had taught us to, to work well together. And that has really inspired me and uh, also has uh, definitely allowed us to be kind of in the in the business that we're, we're in today, where uh, I'm still a partner with my brother in, in business 50-50 on pretty much everything. <laughs> wow, what a mentor relationship that certainly was. And sending you out the door, telling you that you have to have one another's backs, but also giving you that message that together you can accomplish anything. Gosh, I wish everybody had a father. <laughs> well, why do we need uh, offsite professionals to run our businesses? Why can't we just do it all ourselves? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wish I had all the time in the day and had the ability to do things uh, much, much faster than everyone else. I mean, the fact is, is when you are building a, a company and you are doing more and more and scaling up like you just you just can't do everything yourself so this is the the process of delegating and figuring out how to do that specifically offsite professionals are with the advent of technology i mean we're on zoom right now and the ability to video conference there's just other parts of the world that have the ability to do the the same type of work and there's some certain parts of the world where their English is very good and they're technologically advanced and are able to, you know, perform those functions. And, and typically it's at a, it's a, at a lower cost than you can find in, in some certain markets. Um, we're based out of Portland, Oregon. And, uh, you know, it's a West Coast market, uh, a little bit more expensive. It's certainly still affordable, but you know, it's going to be more expensive than somewhere in the Midwest. So trying to find someone here to do that type of work, a lot of data entry and leasing. I mean, there's just functions that are behind a computer that I, I, I can, I can offload that onto an offsite professional and, and it can be much more economic within the business. Well, what kind of task? You mentioned data entry. What other kind of things are you able to delegate to offsite professionals? There is a huge list of their capabilities. I guess I'll kind of start off with, we run a property management company, we run a syndication company. And just to start off kind of some of the functions that we have them doing. First off, I mean, they answer the phones. We, we have a voice over IP, so it gets routed to them. They have their own phone number, they can text. 
They talk to all my tenants, any sort of concerns that come in, like they are the front lines. Some of the places that they come from, they've already been trained in customer service. So they're actually already apt to be able to solve problems and then raise issues when when they become one. So that's one function that, that they can do. We have them writing leases for us, potential tenants that are coming in, talking to them and letting them know. I mean, sometimes potential tenant is mobile and maybe they're not very good at their mobile phone or looking at Google or trying to find pictures or, you know, an address or something like that. So they, they're able to direct them into the right way where they can submit an application for a place. And then after that, like they're some sort of approved tenant comes in, they're able to write a lease. Uh, you know, we use a formed lease that we use for every single one of our places. It's very familiar to us. And that allows us to have offsite professionals fill it out correctly. It's then reviewed by someone before it gets sent out. And then, you know, the, the tenant's able to sign it. But all that prep work, all that, all that time that it takes to get it set up, get the tenant to sign it. I mean, it, it really does save a lot of time. On another note, we have, they're in maintenance. I mean, you get a maintenance call in, they're able to route it to the correct vendor. They're able to follow up afterwards, make sure the vendors submitted their pictures, make sure that the vendor's able to be paid, you know, that the vendor's invoice is correct. There's, there's just a ton of data that goes along with property management that, you know, as long as you're behind a computer, like you can, you can definitely help out. So going further into some like more in-depth processes. We have some offsite professionals doing accounting for us. We have one that's actually like a licensed CPA in another country, and they are helping with the books, making sure that the accounts are reconciled. As property managers, we're required to reconcile the bank accounts against property accounts, against owner accounts and clients accounts. Um, make sure we know what every transaction is going on and there is no money missing. So that is very valuable. And they've been very helpful with that. As far as like more leasing activities, talking about posting ads, you know, we've got ads up on Zillow, Craigslist, Hotpads, Trulia, Apartments.com. I mean, wherever you're advertising, the management of those ads, making sure that they're up, making sure they're up to date, if any changes need to happen. So I mean, for me, like my, my time's best spent probably talking to you, Alan, right? Like if there's other tasks that I can unload or offload on to someone else, um, whether it be even an offsite professional or another employee, like that's going to be beneficial to save my time to do more higher level items. So I actually have one offsite professional as my personal assistant too. She buys gifts for people. Uh, she has credit card of mine. These are not just like project-based people. The offsite professionals that we use, they work full-time, 100%, and they actually work our hours too. Um, I could literally get on my phone and call her right now or text and she'd be willing to do whatever whatever it is I need to do. I guess that's a few items. I, w- I don't want to say that that's all of what they do, but they there's there's definitely more stuff that is is available. It's it's pretty much like whatever you can have done or do behind a computer, they can they can help you. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. As an industry-leading, relationship-focused, design-build construction firm, Mosaic Construction has worked in many different asset classes from multifamily to retail, medical, industrial, and commercial. Mosaic Construction works to execute interior and exterior renovations with their team of trades and project managers. Their experience with value-add improvements has resulted in increased ROI and long-term value of the assets. They work nationally in partnership with local trades to deliver thoughtful, problem-solving construction management solutions to all their clients. For a personal no-obligation consultation, call Ira Singer, 773-491-3145 or email Ira at mosaicconstruction.net. You can also find Ira on LinkedIn. Well, that is quite extensive. And a lot of what you're talking about is pretty high level skills that are required and not just skills, but you're going to have to have some pretty high levels of trust uh, in these employees to be sure that they are not only capable, but that they're motivated and willing to carry these tasks out at a 
high level. And not only are these professionals, apparently they're not just off-site, they're offshore from what I gather. They're in other countries. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. And it sounds to me like you, not only are they doing high skills level work, but it sounds to me like you have quite a team. I don't suppose you developed that overnight. I imagine it was a process. Share with us a little bit about that process of actually starting from scratch and developing an extensive team with extensive levels of skills. Sure. I mean... My dad always asked me the question. He's like, how do you eat an elephant? Well, it's one bite at a time. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. So really, it's about starting with that. Like, what's that next step that's going to get you to the next level? And the question is, is like, how do you get there? So, I mean, if, if offsite professionals are employing these type of people is something that you want to do. The the first step is, you know, I, I just listed off a ton of stuff. But if you're a company owner or you're providing services, like you just have to list like what what is it that's behind a computer that I could possibly have someone else do or help me do. I mean, even if it saves you 15, 20 minutes of an hour you, over a certain a year, I mean that ends up being a lot of your time. And I, I certainly believe that my time is very valuable. So really, it's just a, you know coming up with a list. What what is it that they could do, and uh, really work on your systems and processes. Generally, starting out with things that are repeatable, things that can be done very similarly in the same way, and then coming up with a, a written process on like how to do it. One of the things, the tips that I will give that we do is there's this service called Use Loom. And being able to record your process with your face and talking over while you're doing it on a computer screen is really good. In fact, we've actually come up with a workaround. You can use Zoom as well and just record it. So you share your screen and you record it. And I'll even have the employee on there with me while we're doing it. And what it does is it allows them to see it. They don't have to come back and ask you again to re redo it or like they forgot something like it's already like listed there. They can go in the video. They can see how it's done. Maybe it's a function that's only performed once a month. And they're like, man, I did this once. And then it's a month later. Uh, I need someone to show me how to do it again. Well, if you have it on video and you have this cataloged, then they don't have to ask you. They can just go refer to that. And sure, it'll take them 15, 20 minutes extra, but it won't take up your time retraining them. So that's one thing that we've utilized a lot is really developing our processes and then backing them up with written processes and then also videos of those processes. Ultimately, what we, we started doing after we, we got five or six employees, we started having the employees come up with those. So like we did the first iteration, but you know, it's processes are typically like a living document. Like they don't always stay the same or the technology gets upgraded. So instead of you doing the process, having the employee do it and then reviewing it and making sure that they're doing it correctly, I found has been helpful. And you can also watch it back at like 1.5 speed so you can get through it a little bit quicker. Yeah. Well, it's always good to get uh, feedback uh, from employees. It, it includes them in the process and makes them feel good about what they're doing. I mean, I know that works with on-site employees and I'm sure it is working well with the off-site employees. As you were talking about this, I'm thinking this whole thing is taking a great deal of organization to pull all of these pieces together. And so my question is, who is managing this whole entire process and who is pulling all of the pieces together. My brother and I run our company. We have several companies. So specifically with like the property management company, we have an operations manager. We've just implemented recently some automation software that allows us to track what's going on. And that has been helpful. It's called Lead Simple. It's Jordan Mueller's company, but they specifically work with property management companies. You know, we have team meetings every week. And I mean, my brother and I are, are the, the figureheads and, and running the company. We've started that middle level management to help manage the processes and manage the employees. And is your operations manager, is that manager offsite? 
Uh, she is typically in the office. Through the pandemic, we have really gone even more remote. We started with offsite professionals before the pandemic. And most of our leasing agents and uh, everyone is, I wouldn't say working from home, but generally out in the field, visiting properties, doing inspections. And then most of our offsite professionals are, are doing the backup and computer work. So they're offsite in terms of they're not right in the office, but they are local. They work from yes. the area there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've, we still got to have people go and put lock boxes on the doors. We have to have move out inspections done. But the move out inspections, like we take pictures and then we send it to the offsite professional and we say, hey, put the report together. Like it's it's little things like that that save just a little bit of everyone's time. And the, the person behind the computer is able to perform those tasks and you know, like I said, if it's someone at a much lower rate, then it's certainly economical for the business to employ them. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. Would you ever invest all your money in a single stock? Very unlikely. Yet investors are willing to risk $50,000 to $100,000 in a single property in real estate all the time. Avestor is the world's first customizable real estate investment platform. Investors can build their own custom portfolio selecting investments across multiple asset classes such as single-family homes, multifamily, student housing, self-storage, and shopping centers. You can also invest across multiple markets and different time frames. Avestra also enables other real estate entrepreneurs and syndicators to build and use Avestra's infrastructure and cloud platform to create their own customizable real estate funds. To learn more, visit us at avestorinc.com. Avestor, real estate investing made simple. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you talk about choosing the right employees, particularly your virtual assistants. How do you go about that? And how do you know when you found a good virtual assistant? I know there's a lot of virtual assistant platforms out there. I don't know. There's an endless number of them. And these days, I'm sure, and I have used some of them and they all have good points and bad points. But reaching out to the potential employees who are on those sites is always a little bit disconcerting. They're in different countries and have very different backgrounds and set up a Zoom meeting and you see them face-to-face -face on Zoom. But that's still a very impersonal kind of way to actually, from my perspective, to actually interview and to get to know employees. So how do you go through that application process? The application process, we, we use some filtering mechanisms. A lot of times there's people that think they're qualified for a job, but they might not be. So definitely like checking resumes. We also have them create a Loom account for that used Loom and have them go through and take an internet speed test and kind of introduce themselves. So this gives us like an opportunity to test out their English, test out like why they want the job, have some specific questions that they answer. So it's like this gate that if if they actually are interested in the job, then we're going to know that because it's going to show through their video. So that's a, a good way to filter. The, the next is we have uh, one of my offsite professionals then interviews them prior to us hiring them, screens them, make sure that they're applicable. Uh, typically, we'll have like three to five candidates per position. And then after that, we'll conduct an interview with some in in-person um, uh, people. And that, that from that, the results of that interview will usually select one for the job. After we've selected that person for the job, they're on a 60-day kind of trial period. Uh, typically, we'll associate a raise after that 60-day trial, just because, you know, once we've spent a little bit of time training them, then, you know, they feel as though they've They've learned some stuff. They know that they can do the job and they are warranted a raise. And so we just build this into the contract, which, you know, and sometimes it takes 60 days. Sometimes it takes 90 days. It just depends on, you know, how quickly they, they pick up on the training and the trainings for whatever specific position they're, they're moving into. Well, definitely a process there. You said that all of your uh, people are full-time. Do you ever hire part-time? I do not like part-time. I like a fixed schedule where I know that that person is going to be there. And if I need to talk to them, then I can call them up that they can be right there. So the part-time, it, it gets a little 
confusing as to what they're working on, you know, a part-time job. If it was the only part-time job, I mean, I, I still I still don't like it because, you know, I, I, I don't want them working on some other project work or something else when they should be working on the work that we need to get done. Right. And I feel like there's no shortage of work that can get done. <laughs> <laughs> True enough. I know that for sure. Never an end to projects to get done. So what are the major challenges in offsite professionals and how do you face those challenges and overcome those challenges? Well, Alan, that's a good question. I mean, one of the colloquial terms for offsite professionals is like virtual assistants and I, th- I always thought that that had a negative connotation I, is the assistance. I mean, some of these functions that these people are performing are, are high level functions and they're skilled employees. They're not just someone that reads something and, and keys it in. Like there's some thought that goes behind it. So we, the first thing we did was we changed the names to offsite professionals. After that, it's really involving these people in our culture. So we have team meetings where our local people are sitting at a desk and then all of our offsite professionals are on the TV screen. And everyone is there together. We're talking together. I had another off. My assistant came up with a implementation plan that would create more events that we could do together. I want to say in our office, it was pretty cool. One of a a couple years ago, it was Halloween. And one of our offsite professionals, we we asked someone to be on the TV screen while we had, you know, people coming into the office and you know, that person sat there on the TV on the video screen and talked to the the kids coming in for Halloween and got to see all the costumes and she dressed up. Like finding ways to involve them in our culture and our company culture really draws them to want to stick around and also makes them feel a part of something. Like they want to be loyal to a company and they want to feel as though they're accomplishing something for the greater good and really involving them as a person and getting to know them into uh, our culture, I we have that's one thing that I think we've done really well at. So we're we're planning to do some lunches where you know our team here will come in and have a lunch at the desk, and all the offsite professionals will will be there. And it's kind of like it's not necessarily a team meeting; it's something more informal and social, and that allows for everyone to get to know each other a little bit better. Enlightened Investors will be right back after this important announcement. I have a big ask that will only take a moment of your time. Ratings and reviews are the lifeblood of our podcast. So to leave a review, iPhone or other Apple iOS device users, go to Apple Podcasts or iTunes. For all you non-Apple device users, go to podchasers.com. On either platform, search for Real Estate Investing Abundance, Once found, please leave a review and a rating. Subscriptions are also vital to our show's success, so please be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app. It is free to subscribe, and you can unsubscribe at any time. A lot of challenges there that you have learned to overcome. How many off-site professionals do you actually have on staff at this point in time? I think we have about 13. That is quite a staff. And I'm just really impressed with the logistics of all of that and getting these dispersed people all across the world. I don't suppose they're all in the same country or in the same locations. And everybody is working on the same page and all of that is coordinated together. You must really have a good operations manager to pull all of that together. It's really impressive. I'm sure she earns her pay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, honestly, before her, it was my brother and I, like we've, we've done everything on the job. I mean, we started the company from ground up, so we've performed every function. You know, we're, we're here as a backup. Like if she needs help with anything, like we know how to do it. And I think that really helps a lot. It's not that, you know, we, we didn't scale too quickly. We had a lot of organic growth and we we're still growing, which is, is super exciting. Well, I would like to, uh, to explore this further. We are running out of time here though. So I'm sure our viewers and listeners would like to connect with you to learn more about this. How can they get in touch with you? Uh, awesome, Alan. Appreciate it. My brother and I do run our own podcast. It's called Westside Investors Network. 
So if they want to take a listen there, that would be awesome. Uh, I can be found on ajshepherd.com or Uptown Properties in Portland or uptownsyndication.com. And there's plenty of ways to get a hold of us. Okay. Well, excellent. Well, share with us one of your most difficult setbacks in life and how did you come through that time and what did you learn from that experience? One of my most difficult setbacks, I'd have to say I was working for a large contractor just out of college and uh, my time with them was kind of coming to an end and they, uh, they, they cut that down fairly quickly. So I kind of, you know, was toying around with like, am I going to go to work for myself or am I going to go find another job? So I want to say that like that them cutting the cord really just allowed for me to focus a hundred percent of my time on uh, our business and, and being able to do that has, has provided great fruits. So I, you know, it's a, a blessing in disguise. So if you can learn from any mistakes or learn from any setbacks, that is going to be the, the, sometimes they're the best opportunities and you just don't know it at the time. So get through it, try to do your best and it's going to, it's, it's usually all going to work out. Good attitude, good way to approach life. Imagine that you have come to the end of your life and as you lay on your deathbed, what do you look back on with your greatest satisfaction and fulfillment? I think the greatest satisfaction and fulfillment is the involvement of family. I mean, I gave that example, my dad as a a mentor in the beginning and the ability that to run a company with my brother and family and still be sane, I think is an an incredible feat. We, We have struggled before and we've had good times and bad times. And the fact that we're still here, I think is pretty great. So I would have to say that Hopefully, this isn't going to be for a long, long time. But if I was on my deathbed, that would be the greatest feat. Well, AJ, it has been enlightening and a great pleasure being with you today. We thank you so much for being on the show. Alan, thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in to Real Estate Investing Abundance, brought to you by Steve Talker Capital, a company working for passionate professionals like you to develop financial independence built on solid, passive real estate investments. As part of our efforts to make the world a better place, Steve Talker Capital contributes to activities and organizations committed to better understand the equine. These endeavors attempt to enhance the human treatment of horses worldwide. Steve Talker Capital, working for a world where all creatures, great and small, flourish abundantly. For resources to develop your financial independence, connect with us at Steve. Talking